We first started this project by introducing a problem and brainstorming solutions until we came up with this one. We don't pick pillows, the science of design. Through this project, chemistry students will understand how influential design and construction materials can be in environmental pollution. The main goal of the project is to create an interaction between chemistry and interior architecture students in the understanding of the influence of design in building construction and its impact on the environment, covering relative topics such as LEED certification, building location, and green building. How do we design? Every designer is different, but our creative processes usually involve bubble diagrams, zoning diagrams, criteria matrices, and rough floor plans. Reverse engineering is a process that uses evidence from research and practice to make decisions. It's knowledge and science based and was first developed by Kirian Timberlake. It's a popular framework for design, but is not a set of rules, and it also facilitates collaboration. How to reverse engineer. Humans are influenced by their surroundings, and designers must be aware of their surrounding influences. So we first must experience life, and then assess the emotional effect, identify the mechanisms responsible, and then apply this knowledge. Knowing the responses desired and how to obtain them is the beginning of design. How design affects individuals. To know what parts should be considered, think of the detail being described and what it would feel like to be in a room with each feature. Light bright versus dark, volume, cramped versus spacious, texture, hard versus soft, and color, cream versus red. Designers have two jobs while designing a space, the functionality of it and the aesthetics of it, which both depend on the material and the finished selection. Designers are limited to their client's budget, and not all can afford sustainable products. Designers usually push for sustainable products, but some clients don't think that it's a priority for them. Sustainable products have to be socially, economically, and environmentally responsible, and several certification systems have been in place to allow for this. Many green rating systems have also been made to set the standard for practice. LEED is Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design. LEED is a voluntary, standardized, 100-point accredited green building certification program that is recognized all over the world. LEED v4 is the most updated version of the LEED rating system and covers multiple types of buildings and constructions. LEED certified buildings have to earn points in different categories and reach one of the four LEED certification benchmarks, certified, silver, gold, or platinum. LEED certification is recognized across the globe as the premier mark of achievement in green building. LEED not only minimizes negative environmental impacts, but it also benefits the building tenant's health and the owner's pocketbook. An example of LEED certification building near the Gowanus Canal is the 3rd and Bond apartment complex. It was finished in 2011 and is LEED Platinum certified. This slide talks about Phipps Conservatory, located in Pittsburgh, and it's one of the most sustainable buildings in the world, and it has received the Living Building Challenge Award, and has received 63 out of 69 lead points. Phipps also has many energy and water reducing systems for heating, air conditioning, and electricity. The Bayer Medical Science Headquarters, also located in Pittsburgh, is one of the most sustainable buildings constructed. At the time it was built, it received the highest lead score in the world of 64 of 69 points. It also has many systems that reduce energy use for electricity, and they treat the gray water on site, reducing water consumption. The PNC First Side Center was the first green financial institute in the nation. It was built on a brownfield site and uses recyclable materials and a subsurface irrigation system to reduce water consumption. The term brownfield site means property, the expansion, redevelopment, or reuse of which may be complicated by the presence of a hazardous substance, pollutant, or contaminant. Listed is examples of what a brownfield site can be. Abandoned properties breed disease and illness and take down property benefits. Land that is more severely contaminated and has high concentrations of hazardous waste or pollution is called a Superfund site. There are approximately 450,000 brownfield sites in the U.S. and are vital components of the smart growth communities. Physical remediation techniques include excavation, geotextiles, soil washing, and soil vapor. Biological remediation techniques are microbial, phytoremediation, fungal, and composite.
Zoning is the control by authority of the use of land and the buildings on it. There are several types of zoning, like Euclidean zoning, performance zoning, and incentive zoning. Zoning in New York is separated into text and maps. The text establishes the districts and the maps show the location and the boundaries. Whole Foods Market, built on the remediated Gowanus Brownfield site, uses an energy-efficient building design and construction, solar energy, and combined heat and power to reduce energy, boost resiliency, and promote environmental stewardship. Whole Foods Market features a chip system, which provides simultaneous heating and chilled water year-round and is designed to keep the store functioning in the event of a utility grid failure. It captures the electricity production's exhaust heat that would otherwise be discarded and uses it to operate an absorption chiller machine, thus providing free chilling. High efficiency, zero ozone depleting commercial refrigeration system. It also has a high efficiency, zero ozone depleting commercial refrigeration system. They have lifetime energy cost savings through the lights being powered 100% by wind, solar, urban green energy. Customers can charge their electric cars at one of the charging stations in the market's outdoor parking lot. The first of its kind, 20,000 square foot commercial scale greenhouse on the rooftop is owned and operated by Gotham Greens, which grows high quality produce year round for the Whole Foods. Water Harvesting Solutions created a hybrid harvesting system that would collect both gray water from the lavatories and rainwater from the rooftop greenhouse runoff and from the solar car shades in the parking lot. This collection is the water that it uses in its hand sinks. A single processing system treats both gray water and rainwater sources to a water quality standard suitable for irrigation and toilet flushing.